evening. We want to thank you for coming to visit with us again. We, today we have a real treat for you. Um, if you notice, there's a third chair, and that is for a guest that we've never met before. So um, as soon as that person arrives, then we can tell you a little more about that. Um, the first thing I'd like to uh, let you know that we all sort of have models and people that we admire. And today I'm so happy to introduce Kana Shibashan to you. She's my very good friend, my spiritual sister, and my, well, in the sports world, we would call it an idol, except in our profession, we are all equal. That's right. So I just love you just on an equal basis. And But it is a real pleasure for me to introduce you to her today. And um, we had sent out some requests for people to mail in cards uh, so we could have a drawing eventually and pick a person that we would do a reading for. And that's kind of what we had planned on doing today, but the lady that won hasn't arrived yet. And so we have a lot to talk about anyway. And so we're just going to get going with that. Now, what I'd like to show you is a picture here. My niece, Claudia, that you met in a previous show, it was called, How Do You Say Paranormal in German? She had came to visit you, and she liked it so well in America, she decided to come back. She packed up the children, and she is now a resident of Olympia, Washington. And this is a picture that her ex-husband um, drew for her, and it was such a beautiful dragon, we thought we'd share that with you. Pretty cool dragon, huh? Beautiful. Yeah. OK, so much for that. Now. Maybe you could recap for me um, how you got to be how you got to be. Wow. Wow. <laughs> cool. Okay, that's going back some years. Yeah. Um, well, first I want to say that I come from a family that's very psychic. Mm -hmm. Everyone in my family is psychic in some way. Uh, most of them interpret their own dreams mm -hmm. and um, information comes through their dreams, especially situations that may be uh, affect them emotionally like death or hospitalization or illness. And um, the way I developed uh, when I was young, I can, going back I remember I was extremely clairvoyant, which is the ability to see beyond natural seeing, it's mm -hmm. called clairvoyance. And I was a child of the nature in the woods mm -hmm. and I lived, I'm, where I live I'm surrounded by woods. Yeah, I've been there. It's right. actually pretty beautiful. And there now. was a very special rock there. Mm -hmm. And I had to walk maybe two miles. Mm -hmm. And I'd go with my sisters and my brothers when we finished our work. And I would lay on that rock and I'd look up into the sky. And now I realized I was leaving my body. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I just knew I was gone. Then I'd come back and then I would see people that had passed on. Mm -hmm. And the first one I was aware of, I think I must have been about 10. And we lived in a very large house that had been a boarding house, 12 rooms. And in those days, you couldn't have much light because it cost so much. And I was in a mm -hmm. coal mining town. And my mother had 12 kids, so uh, she didn't have very much money. So they'd tell us ghost stories mm -hmm. and then send us to bed. And I was, I was petrified. But mm -hmm. thank goodness I had four or five of my sisters in the bedroom with me. Yeah. So <laughs> it made me go through the night. But I remember one time. It was about the middle of the afternoon, and um, I was with my sister Ethel, who's two years younger than I almost, and there's a long hallway, and then there's a hallway off to that, and a little, maybe four feet hallway, and then you went up some steps, about 20 steps, broad steps. And I was going up the steps, and I looked up them, and I said, oh my God, I see a man coming down with a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. And my sister said, oh, you're crazy. I said, no, I see a man coming down with a wheelchair. And here he comes. And his legs are cut off. She said, oh. And it seemed to me he just whizzed past us. Mm -hmm. And for I didn't say much after that for about 25, 30 years. So one day I asked my mama. I said, mama, you know, uh, I remember when I was very young, I saw this, which I just told you about. And my mom said, well, you know, there was a man that died there mm -hmm. in that boarding house that her mother owned, and he had lost his legs and he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, you know, that's not unusual. In fact, when I went to Colorado this year, a woman named Tammy went with me, 
and we accidentally went into a building that was haunted, if you will. And so sometimes just by walking yeah. through, you can pick up the essence of people that live there and you mm -hmm. get a physical description That's of them. True. Mm -hmm. That's how come we know we really see these things. That's true. Mm -hmm. I was discouraged against it, you mm -hmm. know, in those yeah. days they discouraged you. And um, so I didn't say much about it, but I also saw fairies when I went to the woods. And in this little hallway where I sit on the steps, a fairy would come and land on my, this finger here. Mm -hmm. And all I remember was about that high, and you could see through it. And his little wings were just fluttering, but it was, you know, you could see through mm -hmm. it. And it would, they were my friends. Mm -hmm. And the stones and the rocks were my friends. And the trees, I was very quiet. I'm a little unusual. I'm not that way much anymore. But I was very quiet. And uh, so uh, I think I developed because of the quietness in me. Mm -hmm. And also my mother said I was born with a veil. That's what they say, yeah. I don't think we ever explained that. Um, the friends know what clairvoyants are, the friends know what fairies uh -huh. are. We had a young girl that um, I interviewed on our children's show that talked about fairies and how they've changed over the years. Mm -hmm. So would you like to explain what that means? Okay. I know in the southern people know what that mm -hmm. means. Well, I didn't really know I was born with one until about 10 years ago and my mother and my sister told me. Mm -hmm. And they said what it is is a membrane, a thin membrane of skin that covers the face of the child that's born. Mm -hmm. And so my sister, uh, Harriet, who's six years older, she's the one that says, yes, you were born with one. Don't you remember? No, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, <laughs> but they are uh, children. They do remember yes. being born. We talked about mm -hmm. that, too, yeah. And then I had an older sister. Mm -hmm. And she was the oldest of the children, all the 13. And she was born with a double veil. Wow. And she saw people till she passed mm -hmm. from the other side. But she wouldn't talk about it because it, when she was young, uh, she'd go down the street with her sisters or her friends and she'd say, you see that person or you see that man on the horse? And they'd look, they didn't see anything. So she lost all her mm -hmm. companions. They wouldn't go with her anymore. Yeah. And so it made her so sad and hurt her so bad that I couldn't get her to talk about it when I got really mm -hmm. interested in it when I was about 39, really, really interested. Mm -hmm. And then uh, one day you just woke up? Well, what happened was uh, I was very clairvoyant till I was almost 13. Mm -hmm. And then I, it just stopped. That happens because people try to tell us we don't know what we know, mm -hmm. and then it becomes a thought behavior. But sooner or later, it'll double back on mm -hmm. you. I mm -hmm. kept the ability to know when people are sad, mm -hmm. when they're happy, when, they're, when things were going wrong in a house. Mm -hmm with the couple or with the children, I could walk in mm -hmm. and I could feel it or cut it with, we call it cut it with a knife Yeah. or family mm -hmm. because they could feel it. Yeah. And uh, then I had a couple of visions when I think about it before I start developing again. And my mother had a vision. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I really uh, start thinking back about maybe there's something to it, but what really activated it was something that happened when, uh, right before my dad died. Mm -hmm. And um, he'd been he had been sick for maybe a day, and my mother called me and my husband at that time to come and get him because she wanted to take him to Seattle to the hospital. And we came over, and I stepped out of the car and I looked at my dad. And it was the second time this had ever happened. It's the first time I recognized it. I looked at him and he looked dead. He looked like he was dead. Mm -hmm. And I said to him because I was, you know, thirty. 940 and so I could talk to my dad by then about things. I said, Dad, you look like you're going to die. And it looks like it's not going to be very long. And that was a July the 6th, mm -hmm. 1969. And he said, I am. Mm -hmm. And it isn't going to be very long. And we had the most wonderful, wonderful day. Mm -hmm. I got to spend the entire day with him, throwing wood up in the truck. He's a mm -hmm. very physical man. And I got to ask him all the questions I ever wanted to ask him that I never asked before. And then on the 12th, um, he had come, we'd taken him to Seattle, he's in the hospital. But the day before he went, that day he went, I remember he, we lived where the tunnel goes into Seattle, the first tunnel. Mm -hmm. I'm we not lived familiar the, with okay, Seattle. Okay, well, mm -hmm. when you go into uh, Seattle, there uh, used to be one tunnel mm -hmm. and one bridge. And I lived to the right of that in a cul-de-sac, in a big house that overlooked uh, Mercer Island. Mm -hmm. And my dad went and stood on the porch, and he's on his way to the hospital. And he looked up at the sky and looked all over the water. And, and the way he said, I knew he was going to die. 
I couldn't explain why, but he said, God, what a beautiful world. It is. That was the last words I heard my daddy say, except that on July the 12th, early in the morning, he woke me up with a voice of his in the corner of my bedroom. Mm -hmm. It woke me up and it said, get up. And I heard my daddy's voice. Mm -hmm. Now he's in the hospital. I said, okay. But it, so I just laid down, thought I was imagining things. I heard it said, get up. So I got up. Now, I want to I wanna say something here. Um, I was fortunate enough to, uh, you showed a, you shared a video um, of pictures and things, how uh, a documentation of your family by someone else. Yes. And one of the things this gentleman said that if your father spoke, you did it. <laughs> so I remember that. That's yeah. true. And that was very true. When he spoke, yeah. you moved. Yeah. He spoke very strongly, but he's sweet, but when he spoke, you did move. Yeah. And so on the second time I got up, and I heard him say, go to the Bible, to the family Bible that my mother had about this thick. Mm -hmm. And she never moved it, but she moved it that day you know, when we came over. And I looked in it, and he said, look in it. And I looked in it, and I found a verse I haven't been able to find since, because I've been looking for that verse. And it said, mourn, but don't mourn long. Oh, how wonderful. And I started crying because I knew my dad was dead. Yeah. And about a minute later, maybe, I heard the phone ring. And my mother was sleeping upstairs, and I was downstairs, and I was, ran up, and my mother ran because we both knew. Mm -hmm. And we asked, when did he die? And it was about 324, because I looked at the clock when I heard his voice. About three, no, about three, maybe between, three, about four to five minutes after he had died, because he died at 324. And it must have been 327 or 330 mm -hmm. when they called us. And I said, when did he die? He said, what do you, they said, what do you mean? Who said he was dead? I said, we know him. Mother said, we know he's mm -hmm. dead. Then they told us he had died. Mm -hmm. And that's the first time I had heard an independent voice. Mm -hmm. And that's the ability to hear a voice out there. That happened to me in Seattle. I told you that. Yes. Um, usually, I have a knowing. I know, mm -hmm. um, you, see, you, know, you know, when I say what um, I was told, that's usually just a knowing. I heard an outside voice the other day in a, in a place that wasn't really very <laughs> convenient. I was uh -huh. in this bathroom. and. Uh -huh. It startled me because uh, that was new to me. And so even at the point where I am in my spiritual growth, it was yeah. different, yeah. And it's the only time I've heard it, the voice, but it's the second time I recognized that I saw that look. Mm -hmm. and this has to do with how I started over again, developing spiritually mm -hmm. and psychically. And about six months later, I saw the same look that I saw my daddy on my brother-in-law's face, mm -hmm. on my brother-in-law Zora. He looked like he was dead, too. Mm -hmm. I, to I didn't tell him because he wasn't quite in the space my dad was, and I couldn't say that. Yeah. But I told family members. Yeah. Well, Two you weeks later, he died. Because mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, I find that not everybody's equipped to handle that. So no. some, most of the time, we don't it's say even that family to members. people. Yeah. Even family members aren't, because I had a sister at the time, and uh, she was into a lot of the Orthodox religion, which was wonderful. Mm -hmm. But uh, when she was in, thought I was on my way to hell. Mm -hmm. So she, when I started developing, she wouldn't let her children come around me. Ah, yeah. We, yeah. Which is fine. We've been there. It was okay. Mm -hmm. Because they talk about it now, the children, and tell me that they don't mind. And mm -hmm. she says she's sorry now. She didn't know. But she's very psychic. Mm -hmm. But hers comes in dreams. Mm -hmm. And she's scared of it. Mm -hmm. She sees it, she doesn't like it. Because it's usually about death or mm -hmm. illness. Yeah, so what I did, when I saw the second look on my brother-in-law's, being very logical, I said, Something's, there must be a way to find out how I know. Exactly, yeah. And so I, I asked around, and finally I said, well, I just opened up the book, because my mother said, sometimes you want a message. Open up a book, or the Bible, whichever, when I opened up the phone book, and point, just shut your eyes and point, and I pointed to the Aquarian Foundation in Seattle, mm -hmm. which was a spiritualist church. Mm -hmm. And I studied there for about 20 years mm -hmm. under some of the greatest mediums I've ever met and the greatest psychics I've ever met mm -hmm. and some of the most wonderful, sweetest ones. Well, I don't know any of your teacher, I don't think, but we do have some people in common, like Shirley Thibault. She yes. was a real pioneer. Yes, she certainly was. Yeah, she's Wonderful so woman. Wonderful she's so woman. sweet. Mm -hmm. I remember reading for her for them once, mm -hmm. Shirley Tebow and her mother and her uh, sister, 
mother was sweet, I felt like, you know, if you believe in past lives, I felt like I had been in the family. And I seen her about, I seen her last year for the first time in many years, and she's still doing wonderful work. And I used to go when she lectured and did yeah. her work on stage. She does, yeah, she's just so easy. She's a real person. Oh, she just, na she just mm -hmm. is so wonderful because she's natural and informal. Mm -hmm. she, she has no airs. That's you know it. what I mean by yeah. airs? Yeah. And uh, she's just really, and she has so much energy. You know, she's, I think she's an Aries. I don't know what she is. Uh, she's but, an Aries. But I know I she's a very she's reputable um, psychic very much. also. She, mm -hmm. she wrote a lot of columns in the, one of the papers. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. PI or the Times. And I think she, it was PI. And she wrote a book called Evolution of a Psychic. Oh, it I was a real that. fun book. Oh. Yeah, and I remember I was reading her book and um, I was at my daughter's and one of the hamsters was given birth. And so the granddaughter, my gra oldest granddaughter, wanted me to watch the hamsters while I was sort of glimpsing at my book and the cage fell over. And um, so eventually, my granddaughter didn't talk to me for three weeks. <laughs> and eventually, she thought the book was more important than the hamsters. Yes. So that was our first Aww. big fight that we had. <laughs> yeah, so it's a, that's so much for Shirley. Yeah. yeah. But I want to acknowledge her, yeah. Yeah, so it's. Um it's been quite a journey. It has. And then I got to travel to England, and that's where I was amazed from the lack of information that you get from England to the United States. Because exactly. I thought, uh, I forgot there's Druids there at one time, you mm -hmm. understand. And uh, there were so many psychics there. Mm -hmm. I mean, one on almost any, every corner in London. I am mm -hmm. serious. I went into shop because I didn't know there was any at all there. But it's very accepted. Yes. It's part of life. It's normal. It mm -hmm. is. And um, it's so normal that a lot of the healers mm -hmm. are allowed to go into the hospitals exactly. and work with the mm -hmm. doctors, which mm -hmm. I think is wonderful. Yeah. And um, I met a couple of wonderful uh, psychics there and healers. One woman had a, a machine. It must have been six foot long and about a foot of maybe six inches this way. And she did healings with it. Mm -hmm. And she'd move these gears and all this stuff. And a friend of mine went for healing a couple, and I watched her. Mm -hmm. And I never got to contact her because I loved it, mm -hmm. knowing what machine that was. But I also got a chance to meet someone who did Carillion photography. Oh, yeah, I have inserts, but I haven't found the right person to bring here to show how that really works. It's very hard to find the right camera. The right person. And the right and the camera. Right person, yeah. And the ca because the camera is very expensive. They start about $32,000. Exactly, yeah. And what it does is photograph the energy around you, which mm -hmm. is called, we call our aura. We've, we have shown aura mm -hmm. photos on the show. And I've only known one person who had the camera that really put it in more of a, a clearer mm -hmm. image or uh, the others are kind of blotchy and mm -hmm. not of the best quality, but it still helps. Mm -hmm. And um, so I had a picture taken twice. And the first time I took a picture, I had just lost the granddaughter. Mm -hmm. And around my aura, I was kind of surprised, but not surprised because there's this beautiful violet light, beautiful violet, almost a purple, but not quite. And then I took a picture again when things, about 10 years later, and it was more yellow, <laughs> more blue. But the other one, I was in deep mourning, and I really was. Mm -hmm. You could just see it. It was beautiful. Yeah, they just change from, uh -huh. you know, from one day to another yes, they sometimes. Do. Yeah. So that was really interesting. I, was, <coughs> I worked at the school, and I mean, I say I worked because mm -hmm. I sat in the dark for hours mm -hmm. with about, sometimes with one medium at church, and then some of the mediums there would have us do it in their home. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were so wonderful. Mrs. Robinson and Alice Clayson and uh, Rose Enos. Those are the ones I remember. And uh, I found out how powerful light was. It is. I did not know light was hard to keep from getting into a place. It is. You can walk into a totally dark room and you have one flicker of yes. light. And guess what happens? What? It gets a little lighter. Not the other way around. The darkness does not buffer the light. Um, see, if you, if you have a real dark room and you come in with one match, one little light, and that makes all the difference in that room, the light does, the dark does not drown out the light. All we need is one flicker. Oh, that's interesting. Cool, yeah? That's really interesting mm -hmm. because she wanted it really dark and it was a closet we were going to 
meditate in. Mm -hmm. And we, it took us a month to, she had one window. Wow. And it took us a month where there was no light coming in. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how we did, I know we had plywood, we had uh, uh, paper. Finally we put the plywood up. And then we had to tape it, I think, with the metallic tape. Mm -hmm. And finally there was no, was a darkness where you couldn't see anything that was similar to the, when I was in seance rooms. Mm -hmm. Totally dark. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason for having the seances in the dark. I've never been to a seance, so, well, so can you tell me about that? Oh, to me they're just wonderful things. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, um, there's a cabinet. Mm -hmm. They call it a cabinet. And in the Jewish temples, they call it something else. I can't remember, but mm -hmm. they got a name for theirs. And it's usually made with velvet curtains mm -hmm. because velvet holds what they call the etheric energy that surrounds us. Yeah, you told me that earlier okay. today. And so I, I got a chance to go in to one and sit in it because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm real curious and very uh, skeptical. Mm -hmm. I don't accept everything. And I want to see if there's any, how this person, you know, did these things. I want to see if there's any little tricks and things, you yeah. see. So I asked him, can I go in the, sit in this, a velvet lined, um, about six foot tall, opened at the top, and enclosed in velvet. And there's just a seat there, that was it. And I sat there for hours off and on. And um, in the seance, um, there's what we call a trance medium. Now a trance yeah. medium is different than a mental medium. Exactly. I do mental medium shifts, I'm wide awake. Mm -hmm. when I'm doing my readings. Mm -hmm. But a trance medium, we say they leave their body and another spirit comes, comes and takes in. over. And um, so this gentleman was very uh, qualified to be a trance medium. And he would go into trance, but he was so gifted that he would have people. Um, he'd take a drink of water like this in front of everybody mm -hmm. before he went into the cabinet, take a little sip of water, have people put the tape on his mouth, oh. mark it, mm -hmm. and then he'd go into the room and then he would, uh, voices would come through him and the spirits would come through and give information. Mm -hmm. And one time I didn't really believe that, you know, I thought there's no such thing as materialized spirits. So one time I heard a voice and it said to come up to the, to the cabinet and I, I was really scared. Even though I was training, I was frightened because I thought it'd be cold and like the spirits I read about, you know. And so I went up there and I felt just as human as you are and I was. Wow. And I took all my fear away. Wonderful. And I went to many, many seances. Now, he held some in the, in the light, mm -hmm. but it's very hard on the body. Yeah, I, I know some channelers mm -hmm. that just get a little wiped out when they're done. Mm -hmm. um, I hear something here. I believe our guest is here. So oh, wonderful. Maybe we could... Um, have her come and we can do this this mini reading okay. and so um, we can we can do that and uh, okay. and we get back to your story sure <coughs> yeah and while they while they're bringing the lady here um, maybe we can look at this picture my director uh, brought this to my house here not mm -hmm. too long ago and he asked um, what I thought of the whole thing so maybe you could reinforce what okay. I had told him I, I thought it was an electrical magnetic type of uh, what do you call that? Energy? Yeah, like a, a force. A, a force, anything like power. that. Mm -hmm. Well, the thing I get about when I first looked at it was mm -hmm. the colors. Yeah. And then I looked at it more and I, I felt that the director was being activated with mental energy because of the deep yellow. Exactly. And yellow activates the mental body. Mm -hmm. And he's surrounded by it. So let's turn, okay. let's turn it around so the friends so can see what we're doing, talking about. So whatever he was doing, he had about. people from the other side really helping him okay. mentally in uh, forcing his mental body. Now there's some violet in yeah, there, if you can see Yeah, we have to it. hold it still because... Okay, now there's some violet in there. Mm -hmm. And the violet, I think, has to do with his spiritual growth that's mm -hmm. um, in the process of starting not very much, mm -hmm. the spiritual part of him. And the green all around shows to me that um, whatever he was doing, there was a lot of healing going on. Mm -hmm. And the young lady, or is that a young man? Is, uh, I don't man. know, I can make it up. I think it's a young man, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's a girl. Oh, so, yeah, I thought girl. it was a girl. Yeah. I couldn't tell at first, but it, as I tuned to her vibration, I felt that she really needed a lot of healing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things going on in that young girl's life that needs deep, 
deep internal cellular healing and i'm not going into the things i think happened to this young lady yeah because some of them are pretty hard for her okay now the instant healing he and so was the director or that was it the director you're talking to yes because the yeah. there's some green over him if you'll see where the yellow mm -hmm. is yeah. so on in some way there's some healing going on while he does what he does he doesn't he's not aware of it but he's sending out a lot of he's healing. getting there yeah i believe it because it he's, showed he was starting i'm real proud of him yes he's, it shows he's, he's starting it okay now what happens when when we start talking sometimes we don't want to interrupt the person's mental flow so uh, it's because once we get going, we can really stop. So, <laughs> true. but at this time, I want to stop with this. Okay. And our guest has arrived. And um, would you introduce yourself? Because I have no idea. I, I have never met you before, and this is the first we have a baby. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he was sleeping, so I, I didn't oh, want to disturb him. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> uh, my name is Tara. Hi, Tara. Very Hi. pleased to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Nice I, to meet you. I heard you on Justin's show. Um, I think it was last week or the week before. Um, his radio show on Chaos. No, no, that was me. Not oh, that was me. you. Must that been her. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, okay. we did. We did a full drive together. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was me. This lady's name is Kana Shiva Shan, and I'm Lillian. Mm -hmm. Dustin's told me about you. So since Kanashi Bashan is, is uh, visiting us, so we're really fortunate, we thought what, what we could do is um, we can show the friends sort of how we do this. So she's going to do like a mini reading for you, and then um, we can compare notes and sort of friends know how we do this. And, and it's really nice that you came. Thank you. Okay. It was nice mm -hmm. to be invited. <laughs> so do your stuff. Okay. <laughs> it's so uh, wonderful and rare to have a baby. <laughs> it is, isn't <laughs> Such it? A new, yeah. beautiful, look at the baby smiling. They, is it a girl? Oh, it's a boy. boy. Yeah. He's aware too. That's very special. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I was taught, and I don't know if it's true, but they said uh, I shouldn't read for children under two. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> but I do. I do too, yeah. <laughs> I do. And one of the things I do feel, I don't know his uh, birth date. Would you give me his birth date? Yeah, it was August 14th. August the 14th, okay. Because one of the things I feel really strong is the young man is going to be extremely emotional, quite talkative, <laughs> and very aware of his surroundings on a almost unconscious level and pick up all kinds of things that are not balanced. So if someone's arguing, he'll get fussy. And I feel him having problems in the stomach area. Oh, yeah. Okay? <laughs> I feel that's where it's going to hit him, right? In his stomach. And so when it does hit him in his stomach and he's a little fussy, kind of lighten up on whatever you're giving him, maybe dilute it, you see? Because that's where his emotional, when he's upset, that's exact. Even when he's older, I see him controlling it more as he gets older. But that's where I see it hitting him right now. And he's just sort of a reflector of things going on around him and what he's picking up around him. Even when you take him to a, like to the mall or to a store, he picks up, he is so psychic. <laughs> he is so psychic now. And I think that um, also I feel him have some problems teething when he gets older. I think it's something that happened in the family before. People mm -hmm. had a little problems with their teeth mm -hmm. as they come in. And um, such an added thing for you, such an added thing. I think he's added a lot. Is that your first child? Mm -hmm. I thought so. Because I see him adding so much love and bringing out so much love out from you to him. There's such an exchange of love. And I, the only thing I want to say about that for you is it's real important that you don't overprotect. Because <laughs> I see you almost, he'll think he's smothering. <laughs> you see, because he's a free freedom child. He's a child that loves to explore and uh, feel free and to do things. So you're going to have to watch him because yeah. he's going to really explore early. I mean, I think about five months when he's crawling, okay. that he'll get into things. Mm -hmm. He's going to be very quick. He's going to be very quick. You won't have a, you won't have a child a long time. Because he's going to be doing so much. And he's curious. I just get this real strong yellow energy around his head. Mm. He's quite logical. He's quite logical. And, you know, I see, I see this is about money. And they're always young. But I see him holding 
his money tight. <laughs> okay? But he's going to draw money to it. People are going to give him money. Even now, I bet someone's already given him something for a bank or something. Mm -hmm. That's right. He's going to have money. He's going to draw money to him. And he's going to love it. But he has to learn how to appreciate it. I feel, um, oh, he's got so many th possibilities. Just so many possibilities. The main thing he has to learn is how to deal with his emotions. Not to let him upset him so much because he wants things the way he wants them. Okay? And um, not to expect people to be different than they are. Because I feel that. And for you, I think that's part of your growth, too, is to learn to recognize people like they are and decide whether you want to be with them or around them, even if it's family. Yeah. I think it's real important that you have your checkup. You may have already had one, but I think if you have another one, it's important to go. Because I, I, I'm not a doctor, and I don't see anything. I just feel things. And I feel um, within the part of the female part, it's not quite healed. Hmm. So I want to be really cautious around that, and always. Yeah. No matter if it brings a little problem from somebody else, okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, uh, he's going to change your life. In the sense that you have someone now, something to live for, do you know what I mean? Exactly. You know, yeah. A very smart child. But you're very smart too, you just don't know it. <laughs> you will. Because when he's older, about 15 or 16, you're going to school. Mm. You're going back and connect with school. And you're going on with a career that you dropped because you didn't think you're capable of it. Mm. That has a lot to do with a lot of things we want to talk about. Take I feel your ankles and your feet. It's very important you take care of them. You're going to be on them so much. In the sleep you're missing, you'll catch up later. <laughs> Try to have him take a nap when he's a little older. Yeah. And then you take it also. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> and that's what I see. I see a lot of travel coming up later when you're in your 40s. Hmm. And I see him traveling a lot too. Between relatives somehow. Do you have relatives overseas or something? Um, my boyfriend, his father's brother, is moving to Hawaii. Okay, because I see it eventually going there within a year. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, they're moving in December, so. Yeah, okay, within Can a year I see you going to visit, mm -hmm. and uh, you're going to have a ball with that. That child's going to help you explore the world in a way you would have never explored it. <laughs> going to be a wonderful little boy. Yeah. Very special. Can can I say something sure, here? I, I need to stop her here because I but I I use cards, oh. and the reason I use cards is so uh, people like to see what, what I'm doing. Uh -huh. You see, and so I use cards and I pick your hair color and that's what I build on. Uh -huh. And so as you're talking, I'm I have uh -huh. my cards here, and what I have here, I, I, you have a legal do you have a legal issue, paperwork, um, anything like that going on? Oh, paperwork, yeah, lots of paperwork. Okay, so so we have that, and then see, according to this here, is you are too focused. You have to pay more attention to the things around you, or you when you get so focused, you're going to be missing something. But you're going to be able to juggle your your career and your child very very easily. And the reason I stopped you okay. because it shows that you're going to be moving. Mm. You see, and and. And that's going to be very successful. Even if you have to borrow money, in order to do that, you follow your, your insight, you follow yourself, and you go totally by your intuition. And then life as you know it is going to be over for you because you're going to do really, really well. And the child here, now, I, in the beginning, I, I was sort of, uh, I don't know where I was, but I missed, <laughs> and you say it's a boy? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I have pick up a lot of feminine energy too. So I would think that the child would be very balanced at, you know, left brain, right brain. Mm -hmm. Not only that, he is very telepathic. So when, like she said, when you get really emotional, he is going to pick that up and get emotional so it could appear, you know, in America everybody has to be masculine. It's not going to be like that because he's going to be very rounded and very um, caring. Mm -hmm. He's going to have a lot of loving energy. So that's why I picked it up as a feminine energy. Did you? That's what yes, you did I think originally. You're right. I think that as you're talking, I 
feel that uh, he has a very artistic side to him, which is mm -hmm. a feminine, feminine. side. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be very important as she guides him to help him bring that out mm -hmm. to kind of offset the, ma uh, the macho masculine energy exactly. that's in the world right now mm -hmm. so that he can be balanced like he's supposed to be mm -hmm. with that wonderful artistic. And I think it has to do with either building like architectural or drawing artwork mm -hmm. in some way. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's very much so. And I believe in past lives, I don't know that I'm supposed to say that, but if I'm not, you can cancel it. <laughs> but I believe he's been an architect in Egypt. Hmm. And I see a master that we call Zoser, Z-O-S-E-R, who was the head architect over the pyramids in Egypt. And I feel that young man worked under that man. Hmm. So he has that. He has the ability, I think, also to talk and mm -hmm. move things, be, uh, uh, like the legal thing, I think you make a good lawyer mm -hmm. if you wanted to. I don't see him doing it. Mm -hmm. but, but the legal thing, I was talking uh -huh. to her about, yes, um, yes there's some, some issues, paperwork yes. that is unfinished that you need to really get to so you don't have a later problem. Do you have a traffic mm -hmm. ticket too? No, uh -uh. A parking ticket, anything like that, something you overlooked? I have, um, no, the main thing I have to do still is thank you, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you can tell people and, understand. <laughs> and uh, and his his um and his um health insurance. Mm -hmm. Get him mm -hmm. signed up for that. I still have been putting it off. So if you get a ticket, pay it. All your like, consequences. <laughs> you see, I go I go ahead in time for you. Uh, and so that's sort of what I have. So you just you make good decisions. Just don't be so focused. And I think your life will go really great. You could ask one question of, uh, of her and one of me, and then we're going to get back to the rest of the show because um, we still have some stories to tell. So what would you like to ask Kanashi Vashan? And you can oh come gosh. see us after the shows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, gosh, questions, huh? Um. I didn't come prepared for questions. <laughs> Most people well, aren't. <laughs> that, that's part of the, the fun on, on the visit that we have here. I always put at least one person on the spot, so today it's you. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I, knew, I knew it would be that. Um, I don't know. Well? Just family, I guess, family. I mean, what do you see for him? Family-wise, I mean, can you see things like that? Can Can you speak up a little bit? Oh yeah, family-wise. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do you see for the energy that that um, you know he grows up in? I mean, can you is that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is for you because I stay sort in the present. Okay. okay. I don't go to the past, the past and I don't go too to fast. I'm de I'm mm -hmm. dealing with things that concern you right this minute. Well, I feel for him that uh, family is going to mean so very much. That's going to be his first priority. Till he uh, forever, family, you and uh, maybe your close one I call it, and then uh, whatever children come after that and the relatives there. And later when he has his own, that's going to be the first priority in his life. He loves family. Now, if things happen where you and the father later aren't together, it's going to be very important that it gets explained to him. You can explain to this young man. He's, he's an old soul. Mm -hmm. And when he gets the verbal ability to and anything, you can talk to him. That doesn't mean he's going to mind, uh, do, you know, do what you want. But you can reason with him and give him information. He's an information gatherer. And uh, I just see him loving his family and a lot of love around him. And if you don't give it to him or someone else doesn't give it like he wants attention, he's going to get it. He's hmm. going to know how to get it. He's very dramatic. He's got a very dramatic side. He could be in. He does. Now, that might bring me to something I'm going to ask you now. He has some qualities from his grandmother. Now, I don't know, I need, you don't have to answer that, that this is for you. He has some of his grandmother's qualities. Now, whether that's to your liking or not, I'm going to abstain from that. Is that the word? Abstain. Up, yeah. Uh -huh. so, but that's for you to think about. So, But keep in mind, he is an individual regardless, and it's just the DNA that kind of works against us sometimes. <laughs> and he needs strong guidance. Yeah. If you... If you mean no, 
you must follow through because he he's good <laughs> mm -hmm. at not doing it if you don't make him okay mm -hmm. we have to be very firm with him because he needs a little what I call discipline and it could be time out or taking a little toy whatever it is for him he cares so much about you that what you do affects him mm -hmm. say so it won't take too much right now or till teenage maybe even teenage won't be too bad so what did you name him Calder Calder Snow Calder that's kind of close to your name isn't too it young. I get oh. writing too as the ability to write. Do you write? Mm -hmm, Let's see writing around you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, his dad's always trying to get me to well, try, you to, will try to publish. You will later. <laughs> right now, you, you've got other things you have to do, but you eventually will publish because there's writing, and I see around him, I see a printing machine going back to Gutenberg, Germany or something, way back. Mm -hmm. And he loves the word, the printed word. Mm -hmm. He loves it in... Uh, He's going to be able to write also. And I mean uh, research papers and things, not just uh, silly novels. He wouldn't do that. If he wrote something, he'd have to have something to it, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, I think he's going into space, too. Mm -hmm. But I have some, I think he's going to be a little d dyslexic for a little mm -hmm. while. Mm -hmm. And at that time, uh, I think uh, d this is how I arrived at it. I saw him watching TV, losing interest. And when you rewind it, uh, you know, on play and rewind, and it goes backwards, that's what he would really like. So I think he is dis dyslexic, a little just bit. Just a little bit, but he will overcome that, mm -hmm. just so you know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if anywhere along the line, I feel that within six to seven months, one time when he goes to the doctor just once, I want you to be careful about if a doctor says something just once, don't, don't panic. You know, you get information and ask questions and see another doctor if you don't believe it. Because I feel something on the heartbeat and it's not serious. But I feel that it's just off one time when you go to the doctor and the doctor says, well, it's not quite right and I feel you panicking. And there's no need for it at all. Yeah. It's just at that time it just happened to not beat at the rate that most of the time it does. That's all, but it's just once. I see no problem around his heart. Not until he may be 80. <laughs> oh, well, that's a long time from now. And speaking of time, uh, what we would like for you to do is, um, in a few months, I would like for you to come back and tell the friends uh, where we went with this, you know, a call-in or something, because we like feedback. That's the only yes. way we can tell whether... Um, we don't mind not being accurate, because, you see, readings are based on the moment. Mm -hmm. And then based on that, we will look at things for you. Now, if based on what we told you, if you change things around so they work better for you, it would appear that, you know, we don't really, we didn't know too much. But that's what readings are for, for you to make better choices. Right. Mm -hmm. So by you having to move, by you wanting to go, if you don't move, and then your life doesn't work out, that's on you because according to this, you're supposed to go and... Um, you agree with that? Yes. I also feel that you have to be careful around your back. I get weakness in your back. Do you mm -hmm. understand? I don't want you doing a lot of lifting. Mm -hmm. So don't. I don't think you're going to move the next month. <laughs> I think it'll be a little couple of months at least. So you're, because I think you got a weakness in the back, around the middle part, but it affects the back bottom and goes out to the hip mm -hmm. and the left side sometimes. So be careful how you lift him too if you have a crib. Be careful. No, he's in bed with good. Yeah. But, but when he, he will gets grow, older, you But know. when he gets older, mm -hmm. you want to be really careful lifting him when you're tired. Because mm -hmm. I think you'll forget to lift properly. Because there is a weakness in your back that I think can be taken care of through some means that you'll find out. Right mm -hmm. there. So I thank you very much for you know taking part of this. Um, it, it was really wonderful that you came. And um, you stay in touch with us after yeah. the show, OK? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And good it. luck with your Little one. wonderful He's a powerhouse person here. <laughs> it's going to move so fast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to have one of those leashes, you know. I, I had a child, my last child. I used to think people were awful putting those little things around the children and holding on to them so they won't get a leash. I thought it was yeah. horrible. Mm -hmm. That young man taught me I better hurry up and get one before <laughs> he was eight months because he walked at six. Broke all my stuff by the time he was six months. Mm -hmm. And would take off. And that's what I see this one doing. Take it off because he's not afraid. He hasn't got much fear. 
and he doesn't need a whole lot, but he just takes off and he doesn't think he's not afraid. So you have to watch him very closely when he's about two. Mm. He'll get into things, he'll take off, and you wonder where he went. So you won't be able to leave him alone too much, or anyone that has him at that time. You have to keep a close eye on him. He's so curious. She picked up some stomach problems eventually, and I think it'll have something to do with peanut butter, and I wouldn't allow him, I, if I was you, I would not have him chew chewing gum, uh, his, the lining of his stomach, and I guess because it is the, what am I looking for, the, the texture of some foods, like sticky peanut butter, mm -hmm. that, that's what's going to create the problem, so just change his food to it's something that doesn't way. stick like that. Mm -hmm. And acidy. Mm -hmm. I don't think he does going to do well with the foods that are acid when he's young. Mm -hmm. he's got, he makes extra acid in his stomach too because of the emotional stuff. The way he deals with the emotional stuff that comes through. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that. So we're going to get back to our story, and you've both been wonderful guests, and thank you. Thank yeah. you so much. Thank yeah. you. Enjoy it. All right. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't it? I'm gonna put this here. Isn't isn't it isn't it great when they bring us the little oh, ones? That was the first time. I think that's so neat. So wonderful. Well, I have um, I have psychic. several people that that come and bring the new ones, and sometimes we have conversations with them before they get here. You know. Oh yes, you mean when they're pregnant or? Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yeah, that's you, wonderful. You can sort of feel out some of the things oh. because sometimes the action of their mother while they're yes. pregnant has a lot to do with. Oh, it really affects. How they come it out. Affects. Yeah. So that was pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. Hey, so thank you for being such a good sport here. Oh, I, I just love it. Yeah, we've been threatening to do this for <laughs> since January, and we finally decided the time was through, right. Huh? Yeah, we did. Hopefully, it worked out nice. Yeah. So I guess we'll get back to your story. So you, um, you went to the Aquarian Aquarian Foundation Foundation in Seattle, in Seattle? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. years, and then I didn't stop going till I moved to Ross in Washington. Mm -hmm. And over there, there's not much, there's not too many places where you can meet people and mm -hmm. together. I've met people separately and we talk about these things. But. Mm -hmm. And this is the funny part. Kanashiba Shan was such a um, deciding factor in my spiritual growth in life. And we talked to thousands, I want to say, we talked to thousands of people, you know. And um, I always tell her the story how we met because she can't be I, I can't remember, remember when I met you. Mm -hmm. I don't know how I missed it, but I just don't remember. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm going to tell it again. Okay. Um, I don't think it was the Aquarian Foundation. It was a place, it was called the New Life Foundation mm -hmm. with a woman named Jennifer James. Okay. 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 Yes, I remember. It's been a long time. Very long. <laughs> yeah. I was sick a lot and my symptoms and my symptoms and the illness didn't match, so they decided they needed to go another route, and they sent me to Seattle to the New Life Foundation, and there was Kana Shibashan, and she taught me about thought forms that, uh, that we've talked about with the water. And then, then you, I lost you for 16 years. And one day, uh, I was at the Boeing Psychic Fair, and there you were. Mm -hmm. You were also the psychic, uh, Akhenaten, in our show Akhenaten, he was talking about being at at Boeing's, and uh, there was a psychic there that said, come over here, we need to talk to you. And you did a reading, well, you did you did a reading for him, except you wasn't there. Right. So we determined that yeah. too. So you're just all over the place, and you just don't know it. I certainly don't know it. <laughs> you need to stay home, so <laughs> you need to stay My home kids sometimes. said I'm always gone, but I'm usually at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do um, you have any advice as far as picking psychics? Um? Yes, I, um, I think it's very important that if you wish to go to a psychic, that um, you check with someone that's been to one, mm -hmm. if you can. That one that they feel has been um, good for them or mm -hmm. honest or, because unfortunately there's some out there that aren't. Exactly, yeah. And they may be psychic, but they're not honest, okay? That doesn't always go together. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to say here that spirituality doesn't always go along with psychic. Psychic is mm -hmm. a talent. It is. Yeah, it's a gift. It's a gift. Yeah. And you, it's, you can be psychic and not spiritual mm -hmm. or not um, carrying out your life the way people 
think would be best for you. And so you have to be very aware of that like anything else. There's good and there's, there's positive and negative. Mm -hmm. But I would, uh, when I went, of course, I was right in the midst of all these psychics. Mm -hmm. So um, they taught me who to go to outside. And I very seldom went outside this group. Yeah. But uh, when I did go, I would go to somebody and say, uh, do you know someone? Mm -hmm. that you've, have you been to someone? Mm -hmm. And then they'd say, well, yes, this one, da, 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 and I'd go there. Mm -hmm. see? Because I, even now, I go to psychics rarely, mm -hmm. but I still go. Yeah, same here. I, I've um, come to see you. I, mm -hmm. I think you're about the only current one that I have. And then the important thing is too, you know, don't go to psychic for fun. Uh, because we make, <laughs> we are very ethical, most of us. Yes. And uh, we try to do the very best for, for you that we can. And so just to come for fun, that's just wasting your energy and hours, you know. Uh, we kind of like therapists. Yeah. We're nurses, we mothers. That's we true. should have been bartenders, you know. <laughs> we could have. That could have been. Yeah. I think that's very true, I, uh, especially privately if you come one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. yeah. I do a lot of, um, I don't know how to say it, they call it entertainment. Mm -hmm. I went to get a license, you see. Huh, <laughs> been there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I went to get my business license, they didn't know where to put me. That's right, but we have a category now. We saw to that. Well, I didn't know that because yes. the last one I got is under entertainment. Mm -hmm. No, you can now get a psychic. Um, no, no, no. It's called an intuitive consultant. We okay. now have so intuitive. I didn't know that. Yes, well, that's good. Yeah, that's um, wonderful. Yeah, the, the the friends at licensing department. Oh. They. Um, I ran into the same thing, and they were very mm -hmm. nice, and they made a category for us. So I do a lot of uh, big parties mm -hmm. for companies, mm -hmm. like 300 people and things mm -hmm. like that. And I, they're always, uh, I think it's kind of humorous, mm -hmm. because I believe that I have a job to do, mm -hmm. and I feel I'm responsible for everyone that sits at my table. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whatever comes across that table and how it affects those people. I feel responsible, and I feel that I'm um, a developing psychic, and uh, I'm not playing like they think I am, because <laughs> they come and they really think they're going. First, they say that I'm a fortune teller, and I always tell them, "No, I'm not." A future teller. That's yes, future, but not future. fortune, because that's against the law in the state of Washington on the blue books. Mm -hmm. One year in, in jail yeah. for being a fortune teller. I didn't know that. Yes, I did. I checked mm -hmm. it out. And so I tell them, no, I'm not a fortune teller. Um, I just see, I, I feel, I don't see things because that's against the law. I didn't know that. Yeah, that is, that's those little blue laws they never use. They had, a, they had a gypsy law in Greenville, Illinois, and um, we've, we've told you about that, where they thought I was a gypsy. Yes. So, so, so same thing. In the meantime, we found that Greenville is in the Eighth Circuit, and it is illegal, now illegal in the Eighth Circuit to have a gypsy law. See, so it oh. turned the other way again. It just Wonderful. depends how you challenge these Wonderful. things. Mm -hmm. But they come and they um, think they're going to have fun, you know, and I hope they do, because mm -hmm. really when they, they're having fun, they're more open. Mm -hmm. Or at least. <laughs> Should always be a positive yeah, experience. And, and play mm -hmm. and fun. Mm -hmm. And then after about maybe a minute or two, they they see that it's more serious for them. And and they get into it and they enjoy it, but they're always surprised. Yeah, we could do a whole show on oh, that one. Yeah. But you know what we are going to do? You have promised us to come back and tell us a little bit about your historical background, and we're yes. going to do that in a couple of weeks. Okay. So I can get you to come back to Olympia because uh, you sure are a joy and a, an addition. So the more we can get you over here, the more people can come um, and get a hold of you. And I thank you so much, my friend, I thank you for it's coming. And we've been wanting to do that. So you have to come see us again next week. Um, we don't know exactly what we'll do, but we will visit with you then and be sure we will find some other subject to pick apart for you. So you have a nice day and we'll see you next okay. week. You have a safe trip home. Oh, I will. Okay. I will. Yeah.